What do you reckon? Shall we build our first uh, Apple-based uh, trading strategy? Let's go. So you know what the for loop is, right? Yeah. Okay. So a for loop is basically um, when we, you know, when we loop through. And in C++, you have to specify a set of numbers. In Python, it's actually a bit easier. What you can do is you can say, for example, for i in, and then you could do aapl dot close, okay? And then if you print i, let's see what happens. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. It actually gives you, it gives you all the prices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you can actually loop really simply in Python uh, with with so called iterators. So so this APL dot close as an iterator, and so all you have to do is in the for loop to specify the element and then it just prints it. Yeah, and so let's build a let's build like a really our first really dumb trading strategy. We say if and let's say we are not. Let's just say we, we create a variable called in pause, in pause equals zero. And in pause means we're either in a position or we're not in a position. So we're either uh, trading something or we're not. So if in pause equals zero, and so, you know, the double equal sign means uh, it's a logical uh, equal. So it's not the equal here, the assignment operator, but it means if this is actually the same as zero, and and this is so nice in Python, it's very you can you can express things really easily just with an n, and then we could say i larger than one hundred. So if our price goes above one hundred, we are closing. Uh, we are opening a position. So what we can say is in pause okay. equals one. Yeah. So we're starting. Uh, we're opening a position, and then of course uh, we want to um, get our entry price for this position because it may not actually be one hundred, maybe another price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now what we can do is L if basically means so something like else mm -hmm. in pause equals one or equals equals one. Yeah, meaning when we're in a position and I is larger than say two hundred. Um, we exit. Yeah. So we say in pause equals zero. So we assign zero to in pause. Yeah. And then what's interesting is we want to calculate our profit, and profit and loss is usually expressed as P and L. So we say P and L equals I which is our current price minus our entry price, which we clocked up here as entry, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we can say print P and L, okay? Mm -hmm. So basically that's just a super stupidly simple trading strategy. It enters at 100 and exits at 200. And what we should see is uh, that it doesn't do anything. Okay, so why is that? Oh yeah, um, so if i is, so if impulse equals zero and i is over 100, we go here uh, and if uh, impulse equals one and i is over 200, impulse equals zero and we print P and L, uh, which is this. So why did it not give us anything? Um, let's just see, because um, we need to debug this. So first of all, it enters, so it does enter. Um, now, somehow, maybe it doesn't, it's not exiting, so I'm not sure why that is. So maybe 200 is too high, maybe we need uh, a little bit less, maybe just 110. Let's try that. Oh yeah, there we go. 
So see, we've got now entry, and then um, obviously we've got our exit uh, P and Ls here. So entry, exit, entry, exit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now this would be a, a trading strategy that basically oscillates between um, 100 and 110. So what we can do is now to verify that this is actually correct, we go entry, uh, price, and then we go, uh, we print exit here. We go um, um, I, which is our exit price, and P and L, and then we can see whether what we're doing is actually correct. Okay. Ah, okay. And what happened here? Can you can you see this? This looks. Like, you know, it's entering at 113 and exiting at 111, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So this is not really what we wanted, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, 106, 110, that's cool. But then we've got 113 and it exits at 111 and actually makes a loss. So what happened here? Have a I mean, look at the code. Like, like it kind of, like, because we... Uh... Yeah, it didn't made it, I'd say, like dynamic, so to say. So, like in that way, it just entries if it's higher than 100 and yeah. then just like exits, like if it's kind of like um, higher than 110. Yeah, so what we've actually done here is we haven't actually specified our conditions very well because what we wanted is it to exit over 110 uh, sorry, enter over 110 and exit, uh, enter over 100 and exit over 110. But what happened is it basically enters over 100 and if it's, if it's let's say, at 120, it enters, but then also exits straight away in the next, in the next round, right? Mm -hmm. if it, you know, if it's 120, like whether it goes up or down doesn't matter as long as it's over 110. It basically keeps entering and exiting. So what could we do to mitigate that problem? I think that's one we will tackle in the next video. 